greetings unsettled souls and uh, unsettled we are now if you have tuned in for the dunce cap of the month award continuation do me a favor and just skip ahead five minutes don't click off just skip ahead if you're obsessed with only having that segment the first five minutes we need to get a little bit more serious than we normally do on the dumps cap of the month award show and we're gonna get to the foolishness in a minute <clears throat> i got in my car today and turned on the radio and clicked 1100 you know why the only reason why is because mike trevisano does his show now i didn't know if i was going to post about this and then i realized he was on 38 states and half of freaking canada so you guys probably most of you know who mike trevisano was died like i i was floored but i'm not afraid to admit this although it, it does sound kind of pathetic joe nobody me drove to triv's restaurant which is his son's restaurant because the host had invited us to go there and hear stories about triv and i went uh, <clears throat> to tell my story, which get a hold of me and let me know you want to hear it, and I'll tell it. I told it to Rado, his former co-host and friend. And I got half teary-eyed talking about it to the point where Rado just stood up and gave me a hug. And I'll tell you why. Because even if you're listening to this, and you have not ever heard of Mike Trevisano before. If you have followed this show, then his nuance has been seen. Particularly if you were a fan of this show when Christelle was hosting it with me. If you were a fan of it at that time, then it's unmistakable that you know. Because... The timing that was used between her and I was some nuance that I learned from Triv and his co-host, Kim Mohalik. Many of you will remember these skits that Christelle and I used to do where you'd be like, all right, we got Nancy Pelosi on the line. Nancy, how are you doing? And then Christelle would say, oh, we're doing great. We got lots of money. Obama's doing everything right. He's doing perfect. He's doing great. Okay, great. All right. All right. Now, Nancy, can I ask you, um, w w behind closed doors, have you had any talks between Obama and Putin? Have you heard about that developing at all? Oh, Obama's doing great. We have lots of money. Everything's doing well. You know, I should repeat over and over again. That was flat out stolen, I admit, by me. I, I, I stole it from Mike Trevisano. Mike Trevisano used to have this gig where he, this joke where he'd say, uh, uh, so we got David Justice on the phone. And for those of you that don't know, David Justice was a ball player that was hired uh, to the Indians at one time. And everybody was really excited about it, but all he did was get hurt. He never played because he was always injured. So uh, Mike Trevisano said, now we got, we got David Justice on the phone. And this is when Justice wasn't doing interviews. Uh, David, how are you feeling these days? Oh, my leg hurts, my back hurts, my knees hurt, my toes hurt, my Halle Berry hurts. Oh, that's that's a shame. So when do you think you'll be back with the Indians again? Oh, my leg hurts, my knee hurts, my neck hurts, my eyebrows hurt. You know, it went on and on and on and on. And it was funny. And Mike Trevisano has passed. And I thought that it wouldn't be right, considering uh, there were a, a number of hosts who I listened to who, not, not how they acted, but the format of the show and how things should flow and when jokes, if given, should be done if you have a co-host. So much of that was from Triv. And I was very, very unhappy to hear about his passing. Rest in peace from the correct views, Mike Trevisano. You will be missed. All right, I said it wouldn't last more than five minutes, and it has not. What is this crap? Oh, my God.
Welcome. If you just skipped ahead from the earlier Trevisano segment, welcome back to the Dunce Cap of the Month Award Show. What the hell is this? RT, bisexual Superman, will destroy America, say outraged conservatives. Look, that's because they want to put a spin on it. I'm about to give some uncomfortable facts here. And since I was just talking about Mike Trevisano, who was no one... No stranger to saying what he felt, even if he caught flack for it, which I'm about to get. Um, he said it anyway, and in the spirit of Triv, I was going to do this even before his passing, but in the spirit of Triv, we're going to go here. Now, for those of you that haven't followed the Superman story, Superman's son, or uh, wait, the, the Superboy, I guess, I don't know if it was his son for sure, at some point was allowed to be called Superman, so in the Superman universe, there are two men called Superman. Superman. One of them now has a bisexual relationship with a male reporter, that is the younger Superman. And they're saying, well, it's just like when Clark Kent fell for Lois Lane. It's perfectly normal. No, I'm not going to go into the article itself. You can look it up. Here's what I'm going to say. Real simple. If you're going to replace the Little Mermaid with a woman of color, keep in mind, I have no problem with women of color. I don't think white or better than black or better than Indian or better than Korean. I don't think anybody's better than anybody else. Merit is what makes a person a good person. And I'm not even that damn sure that I'm that great of a person. But the point is, it's not because I'm white or because my dad was Mexican or because uh, my mom was Irish. You know, it's about whether I, you know, did go to a screw-up. But hear me out. Just hear me out with this. If we're going to go down this route. Okay, let's do it. Let's turn a straight character into a gay character. But, and I want comments on this. Please give me your suggestions. Let's make a few other changes then. Since it's okay, right? It, it doesn't affect anything. Then we're going to make Will and Grace into a comedy. Although Will and Grace, uh, the gay characters, they're going to be straight. Why? Why not? Well, don't, don't, don't say that's not right. What do you mean that's not right? If you can make a straight character gay, then why, why can't we make a, a gay character straight? I thought this was about equality. Oh, here's another idea. Then. How about this one? In the spirit of Triv, I think he'd enjoy this. Let's remake Aliens. But instead of having a female lead, let's make Ripley a character played by Joe Rogan. You can't replace a female lead! Not. I have, I'm a huge Alien fan. Not Prometheus. A huge Alien fan. Okay, no, 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 no way. You made a straight character gay. I mean, it's changing, right? So we'll just take the female lead and we'll give it to Joe Rogan. I think Joe Rogan would make a good Ripley. If not, tell me why he wouldn't make a good Ripley. You tell me, right, because he's, he's a guy? What, are you sexist? One more. Let's go ahead and remake. What, what was the movie that, uh, uh oh... Oh, ah, the, the, the Steven Spielberg movie about a slavery. Let's make a few of the slaves white. No, but that, that's the way it really happened. Oh, are we worried about the way it really happened? Or are we worried about just including everyone? Now, here's my idea. We leave the Steven Spielberg movie alone, and we leave all the black people in it the way they're supposed to be, because they did an amazing job in an amazing film. We leave Ripley to be a female lead in Alien because a female lead has always been in Alien. And we leave Superman straight! Make your own bisexual superheroes if you want them. Don't latch them on to pre-existing condition. I'm not afraid that I said it. Rest in peace, Triv.